Hey everybody, what the heck's going on? Hope you're doing fantastic. It's Jacob with NextGenerationAcoustics.com coming at you with a very important video today and it is how to treat a bonus room. And there's a lot of uh, people who have questions about this. I get asked about this all the time. So I'm going to come at you with a few different case studies and show you how we have treated a few different bonus rooms and had some really good results with great success. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So case study number one, and I do want to shout out Dwarf Star Studios in Carboro, North Carolina. And here was his submission. And this was the room before. This was his layout. As you can see, he has really nice uh, equipment. And he just, before we even decided to change the, treat, the treatment in the room and address the issue, uh, there was some layout problems. And I wanted to uh, address that. So we did a consultation. And I helped him out, did a mock-up of the space. And we, we changed the layout. So here is the new layout that we came out with. So we were going to put the mixed desk here. And before I get too far in. Number one, medium ceiling height, long room, and absorption and diffusion combo. And the reason why is this is going to be a mixing and mastering post-production setup. And later in the video, we're going to get into some bonus rooms that aren't being used for mixing and mastering. They're just being used for recording, and it's more of a live room setup. So we'll get into that later, but back to this one. On this specific design right here, we wanted to get the desk centered equidistant from the left and right hand wall so that way we would have some type of acoustic balance and symmetry we didn't want the waves reflecting off of one wall faster than the other and so we adhered to the basic principles of other mastering rooms the big issue back here is uh this huge cove and we know that sound's going to be reflecting unpredictably already. So that's why we slap diffusion around the whole space to help. And uh, we have the absorption combo that works in uh, concert with the diffusion. The, when the diffusion splits the waves up, it actually helps the absorbers work more effectively. So when we go back to our mock up here, this right here is his submission. This is the mock-up and design that we came up with after we had came up with a few different renderings and renditions. This is the final colors and this is after he had got it installed in the room and here is more of a finished photo you know with with some action shots here. Band playing and stuff and He's been getting some great results out of the space. So y'all make sure to check him out. Give him a follow and tell him I was uh, the one who sent y'all his way. And if you look right here, here's just a couple other designs. This was one that I really liked. This is like a light gray with a golden pecan finish. Same exact treatment design, just a different color finish. Here's some other different angles here. And if y'all are interested in booking a consultation and getting an exact layout for your room is something that you would be interested in, there's going to be a link below. Feel free to click it, reach out to me, book a session, and I will help you come up with a design and answer all of your questions and help you get your room just right if you have a bonus room that you're trying to treat. Okay, so let's get back into this one right here. Number two high ceilings in a large open room, absorption and diffusion combo. Okay, so what we have here is some pictures of the room after treatment. It's got a very high A-frame ceiling and there was a lot of boominess, just sound going around up there on that ceiling. So we mounted some panels up here on this angled ceiling. We did a back wall 
uh, diffuser absorber combo to help right around the mix position. And he uh, got a, a nice array of like four portable panels that we put on wheels so he could roll them around. Here's some other spots near the live room that he has uh, some diffusers worked in. And we also have some other shots here that will give you a better vantage point of you can see how we went about treating this as another bonus room, basically a third story attic bonus room. This is his back wall. If you want to see the front wall of that mixed position right there, it is right here. And sorry about the orientation of the photo. A tight speaker setup, I, I would recommend spreading those out wider and getting a triangular setup but that was just while he was putting the treatment in the room and same thing here we have a little little microphone recording setup right here he's gotten some really really nice results and recordings out of this room from what i hear because the cool thing is he can use that big open ceiling area is a nice live room setup to get a lot of room noise uh if that's something that he wants like let's say he's doing drums or acoustic instruments or he can go over to other sections of the room where he has kind of like a booth set up or he could bring the portable panels in and tighten up the sound he also has a section for mixing and it's kind of just like a multi-purpose bonus room okay now, a bonus room is never going to be like perfectly ideal for recording, mixing, mastering, all that stuff. But if that's all you got, you know, you can use a combination of absorption and diffusion on both of them. We used our column slat diffusers and you can find those right here. And the specific ones in his studio are going to be the golden pecan okay number three medium ceiling height in a long room this time we did absorption only now why do we do absorption only uh one was budget and two this is only being used as a live room um it's a drum room and the drums were just too boomy and he wanted to have a tighter rehearsal space, cleaner acoustics, a tighter space for practicing. And so it's just not so freaking loud. And I totally understand as a drummer myself, believe me. So here we go. We have some aftershots. And what we did is we lined this whole ceiling with two by twos, okay? And this one with two by two. So it's a it's a shorter ceiling height in this specific bonus room. Um, there was some low end issues and we were able to put some bass traps in all of the corners. I wish we could have got more bass traps in this room specifically, but we weren't able to if you see all of these angled ceilings. Okay, so th this desk right here isn't necessarily for, for mixing, so it doesn't necessarily have to be centered and acoustically symmetric for mixing and stuff like that. He said he might do some live recording in the room, so that's perfectly fine if he wants to have a headphone set up and hear playback and stuff like that. Perfectly fine. Here's some other angles of the room after the installation. Now, I know what you might be wondering... How the heck are we getting these on the angled ceilings? And how are we getting them to stay secure? And we will get into that. Number four, tips, tricks, and things to avoid. Now, there are a lot of things you need to avoid if you're going to try to install them on an angled ceiling. And... I'll go into a mistake that I made. The installation in the room still turned out good. It looks good. It sounded good. Happy the, with the results, but learned some things that I would not do again on this specific case study. So let's check this one out. We have another bonus room. This one was treated with 56 panels. These are actually three foot by one foot, but they are in, with, with the custom graphic uh, fabric 
which looks really cool. It's like a deck of cards, and it really goes with the schematic. There's dark trim, red walls. So we did a red panel with dark clover uh, design on the fabric, and we stuck with the one by threes for pretty much the whole room, besides these little custom shapes right here. Now, the issue with this is all of it was hung using Z clip installation clips. Now, Z clip installation clips are not what you want to use. What we use specifically now, that installation took I believe two and a half, almost three days to get done with the Z clips. We could have got that whole room done in one day if you would have used the custom installation cleats. And you might be wondering what that is. Well, I have some right here. It's basically a French cleat, okay? This right here is your custom cleat and it mounts on the wall this way. Then you have a corresponding cleat okay like this and it's going to mount and interlock just like this this one's going to be on the back of the panel this one's going to be on the wall and they interlock with one another okay now you can buy these directly on our website specifically for the width of your acoustic panel if you want to know where that is, just go to our website. You're going to click products, installation hardware, or you can just scroll down to and click all products and go there. But we're going to go to products, installation hardware. This is the fastest way. You'll see this two different sections, panel tracking system, which is if you want to run down a track down your whole wall. And then you have the custom panel cleating, which is if you want to do them in individual units. So the ones that I just showed you, these specific ones right here, this is a one foot unit, okay? So this would be your one foot wide set, $10 for a pair. Now, if you're going to use them on an angled ceiling, you need to use two pair per panel, one at the top, one at the bottom, double them up. That way you can, you, you need a pair for the top and a pair for the bottom. So that way you can slide it in from the side, okay? That's, that's how these go in. So what we're looking at here, I wanna give y'all a really quick example of the panel tracking system in a bonus room, okay? And this right here, if, if y'all look, you can see that there's a there's a, there's some lines going down. And this was a really smart approach because what this specific studio owner did is he painted his panel tracking system the same color as his wall. So we just sent it to him raw and then he painted over it when he painted the walls so it could match and just screwed it directly into the wall, into the studs, okay? Very, very smart approach. And what we got, if you wanna find those on the website, you're gonna to go to products, installation hardware again, and you'll see panel tracking systems, okay? And you can click this, pick different sizes, you can pick different finish options, or you can just get it natural like he did and finish it yourself. So there's a, a few different options there. Now, when you're placing an order, if you want to treat it with the bonus room, you can order it as a standard acoustic panel and then install those cleats on the top and bottom. It doesn't have to be a baffle to go onto the angled ceiling section. You could just get a panel. There's an actual structural frame on the back side of each panel. So this is the structural frame right here. And if you could see this, the, you're gonna screw directly into the panel frame on the back side, okay? And it's, it's that simple. Now, if y'all have any questions about how you can best treat your bonus room, feel free to book a consultation 
you can click here on the link below, or you can fill out our free room analysis, enter in the information about your room so I'll know the square footage, uh, length, width, the construction materials, all the information that I need to know about your space. That's under uh, free room analysis. Just click room analysis on our website and it'll pop up. Fill out the information and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And y'all make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, okay? And I'm glad that I can help y'all out with this. Hopefully this answers a lot of questions about treating a bonus room, some of the do's and don'ts. Remember, doing it with Z-Clips is a nightmare. You don't want to do a thinner panel, a one by three. We ended up having to do, like I said, 50 panels to get the whole room treated, whereas we could have got away with about 25 panels if they were two foot by two foot. Okay, so go with a, a, a bit of a wider panel is something else I would recommend to get away with less units. You'll definitely save money if that's what you want. But if you like the aesthetic of having multiple thinner panels, the the benefit of that is you get more placement options throughout the room. So something to think about is the, the width of the panel. Do you want two foot wide? Do you want one foot wide? The placement, your budget. But if you if those are all questions that you want answered, like I said, just click the link below, book a consultation. I'll help you out. Uh, fill out a free room analysis so I have the information. And in the meantime, uh, you guys, uh, let's let's go to our last segment. And the part that we've all been waiting for, this shit post of the day. Okay. So today, let's see what we got. And I mean, I just, I don't even got to really pick these. I, mean, I just scroll and see what's on there. And you guys never let me down. So what we have here is Thomas Holza. He said, I was mastering an input recording from a wedding gig just for fun, testing some new plugins. Went to check the stereo image and the scope gave me a graph. It looks oddly familiar, yet I can't quite put my finger on it. Wow. <laughs> 191 uh, likes. Okay, so I'm going to laugh at this. Wow. And I thought this was, uh, well, we'll skip over this. I thought this was pretty funny. Pro tip, use a reverse delay plugin while recording to deal with latency. <laughs> um, that's not a pro tip, by the way. Just uh, adjust your playback engine, okay? Well, you guys, hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. You learned something. If y'all have questions, feel free to reach out. Until next time, hope y'all do good. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.